What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Mike Avelli, and I'm back with another reaction video, man. You guys, I got my Logitech web camera, so I don't know if you guys know the difference, but I for sure know the difference because the quality is a whole lot better. Uh, 1080p HD, uh, you know, resolution, everything like that going on. Um, I want to tell you guys something as far as, like, when I'm going to be dropping some more videos, but at the same time, I'm not going to spoil it for you guys. So I'm going to just keep you guys in suspense but just know we working on something big and today man we got top five scary ghost videos to make you go our nukes top five man i ain't gonna lie bro like i caught wind of one of these videos a while back and because me me personally i don't know you guys can criticize me all you want to but i just love scary things like i love horror movies i love scary movies that's just me bro you know what I mean? That's just my purpose. That's just the things I'm, I'm interested in. I don't have a dark side, I don't think. But then everybody got a dark side to them. I don't know. But anyway, let's get to the video, man. Top 5 Ghosts Caught on Camera Norwegian Ghost This next scary video is from Norway, where we see three girls sitting around playing with a homemade Ouija board. Well, it's either a homemade Ouija board or a Japanese Kokori San board. It's. Bro, why do you guys think that's a toy? I know it looked fun because of the movie Ouija in Ouija 2, 3, whatever. But, bro, them things are not toys. They're not, bro. That's like playing with voodoo or something. Like, you ask Kind of hard for... to tell. Anyway, as one girl films, nothing much happens at first. But then things take a very unexpected turn. What do you I I I Stav, hi. Yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> she said I shouldn't have been here in the first place. The kommer ser ut som en lysglimt föran skärmen alltså. Det dricker ju inte. Har du vet att det är Helvete, hele den driten ligger jo. 
Oh, yeah. That thing move. Oh! Oh, I'm gone. I'm if gone. There's one thing to be learned from care. this creepy video is that when you're messing with ghosts on a Ouija board, never say, quote, it's not working or, quote, show us a sign. So, do you think this is a scary video of a summoned ghost caught on camera? Or is it just some bored Norwegian girls pulling a prank? Let me know. Viewer videos. New mm. stop by viewers and first time paranormal. Bro, when things like that go on, it's time to leave. That cup was like the first sign. And then for sure, when that lights or the chandelier or whatever started. Oh, yeah, it's really time to go now. I ain't. You ain't got to show me nothing else. I'm not waiting on nothing else to happen. Well, explorers Salem and Faras travel to the abandoned Excellencia Hotel Suites in the city of Amman, Jordan. They plan to conduct a nighttime exploration of the creepy nine story building. It's the always, hotel is said to be haunted after a tragic event that happened five years ago. A man found it's always the abandoned buildings, bro. It's always you guys. Yeah, you guys look out for that man. It's always the abandoned buildings, especially the ones with bad history from years ago. His wife cheating on him in a hotel room on the third floor. In a rage, the man took her life and that of her lover. Soon after, the hotel was forced to shut down after receiving a bad reputation and guests begin to claim that they experienced a constant dreadful feeling of being watched. However, Salem and Faras are more worried about encountering real and very much alive people during their exploration, as they too feel like they're being watched and followed. When they reach the supposedly haunted third floor, the explorers experience something downright chilling. Dude, who the f did this? This is not cool. Since we entered this place, we can't get a good feeling after this. I feel like I'm being followed. So fuck it. Okay. Is it wrong? Sure. They say this is the one that they got killed in it. I'm not planning to go in. I'm not gonna go in. What the f***? What the f***? Someone was here. Someone was there and used the tub or something. There is more clothes in the f***ing... Oh. What? What? There is more clothes in the f***ing... I need to go. What do you f***ing go? Are you sure? What did I do? Stop, 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 stop. Salem claims that he felt that something was watching them, and when analyzing the footage, a strange, bizarre shape can be seen in a room at the end of the hallway. When Salem pans his camera back to the hallway, nothing there. Then his friend Forrest claims to have seen someone in the hotel room where the tragic event took place and they both just make a run for it. In the last shot, a terrifying figure can be seen watching the two friends from very close by. So did something paranormal chase them out of the hotel? Because just what is this? I leave it up to you to decide. You can watch the full exploration over on the YouTube channel, Salem and Faras, GHT.
Now this next spooky video was sent in by Nuke's top 5 viewer Pastor Aaron from Peace Memorial Church in Oregon. Pastor Aaron explains in his email that because of the current global health crisis, he was attempting to record announcements for the church's temporary online services. He's using his phone to record a video when he is interrupted by something that he just can't explain. Well, hey everybody, Pastor Aaron here. It's my pleasure just to announce that we this Sunday will be, oh, will be uh, open. <coughs> Okay, we're, we're, uh, we've been trying to do this announcement several times today already, and uh, three times that podium back there has fallen over on its own, and it's, uh, it's stable. I mean, it's not wobbly at all. It's uh, kind of like the, <coughs> that uh, podium has been wobbling. Okay, so there's, we checked the vent. There's a vent there that is not an air duct that has any forced air at all, so it can't be wobbling from that. Um, there's absolutely no breeze in here. You can see by the banner there. There's this, no, no air conditioning. It's these things. They're off. I don't know. So I'm just going to sit here and watch it for a little bit. And uh, we will... Let's see if it does it again. Oh. Ooh, that thing's moving. That hasn't been moving. That's new. That's crazy. There's seriously, bro. nothing else. There's no breeze. It's moving again. If something fall out of the ceiling up in there, it's time to go. You got two signs already, multiple times. Pastor Aaron says that he has used the podium for years and it has never once been wobbly or suddenly fallen over. Even stranger, the flagpole next to the podium begins to move on its own as well. The pastor explains that nothing spooky or paranormal has ever happened at the church, but he says that a few times he has been called to help families who were dealing with paranormal events at their homes. You know, you guys would be surprised at what you guys can learn from these horror movies that are based on things like this. Whether if it's The Conjuring, the second one, or the third one. Um, you guys will learn a lot, bro. And one of the things that I've learned is that, even in Sidious, for example, right? When you guys call these priests or people that are trained to get rid of the demon or dark entity in some sort of way shape form or fashion naturally that 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 uh dark entity is going to be stuck on this other person so it's going to and it's going to stick with him for the rest of their life until i guess somebody else get rid of it for him or whatever how that works but that's yeah like that's one of the things i've learned and heard from you know like you guys help people get rid of these demons or whatever they are or evil spirits then they latch on to you. So could something have followed Pastor Aaron back to the church? Let me know what you think. This next video was sent in by Nate Howard from Providence, Utah. Nate says in his email that he and his family moved to their new rental home just four months ago, and almost immediately they began to experience very creepy and unexplainable activity. The family hears the unexplained sound of multiple people walking around the house. Doors and cupboards open and close on their own, and lights in the house turn on and off at all hours of the night. After being woken by these bizarre noises several times, the family decided to set up a few security cameras around the home. Two days later, Nate discovers one of the cameras has recorded something absolutely chilling. in the kitchen flicker on and off by themselves as a strange shadow figure appears out of nowhere. 
Nate is baffled by what they've captured on camera and is worried that the cameras might have somehow triggered whatever might be haunting their new home. But what do you think this could be? Let me know down below. Before we move on to the next video, if you see anything that you think should be included in the top five, contact us at nukestop5 at gmail.com. The kids in the hall. Urbex explorer Colin from the YouTube channel The Bearded Explorer often finds himself in some of the creepiest abandoned locations in England, but he says he's never been to one as scary as this. Why are all these places out of the country? Like, I'm pretty sure there's other haunted places, like even in the U.S. somewhere, bro, but... This, a hospital that was built in 1882 to treat children suffering from horrible infectious diseases. The large structure closed down in the 1980s and has been left to rot ever since. Considering the building's tragic history, it's no wonder that Colin feels a little creeped out as he heads inside completely alone to explore the old hospital. But it gets worse because he starts to hear some very odd sounds. God, this is really creepy. Do you know what I hate? I, I love it, but I hate it at the same time walk around these places on your own because, I don't know, right now it, it feels like there's someone like stooped right behind me following Hell me. Yeah. not, but it feels like that. Yep. Yep. You hear stuff like that? Yeah, it's time to go. Things like this, you guys, this is what I'm trying to say. Place like that, right? You know nobody's doing no work over there. You know nobody's doing no construction. So anytime you hear a sound like that, and that ain't no coincidence either. You know, like, <laughs> excuse me, this show home, I'm gone. Or whatever this is to you, I'm out of here. I ain't sticking around for this. Hello. Understandably, Colin gets more and more freaked out by all the unexplained sounds that seem to be coming from somewhere very near him. He decides to just end his exploration, but before he does, he puts his camera down on the ground to get one last standard B-roll shot of himself walking the hospital hall. But instead, he captures something downright chilling. Wait, hold on. Did you see it? Yeah. Colin is shocked when he sees what looks like the dark figure of a child standing at the end of the hallway. As he grabs up his camera, he captures just a glimpse of the childlike figure as it disappears into thin air. Now, some people say that what Colin captured could just be explained away as a shadow or an optical illusion, while others are convinced that he did actually see the apparition of a little boy inside the haunted hospital. So a month later, and after many requests from his viewers, Colin returns to the abandoned hospital again. It probably goes without saying, but... It did not go well. You know, I love scary things, you guys. The only thing is, like, first of all, to the people that do this type of stuff, do these type of investigations, much props and respect to you guys. Because even though I love scary movies and things like that, and things of this type of nature, bro, you have to be scared of something that you can't see, can't fight, can't defend yourself. It Like, <laughs> if something were to jump out and attack him, right? 
he's not going to be able to do nothing if he can't see it or, you know what I'm saying? He could just, like, it's kind of hard to explain, bro, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just one of those sort of things, like, you can't see it. Like, it's a ghost. It's a spirit. Like, you can't hit it with a baseball bat. You can't shoot it. You can't do nothing. But it can do everything to you. That's crazy. <sighs> Why am I doing this? Why am I here on my own, walking around this abandoned hospital that I saw something? I, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was a ghost. It it wasn't a shadow. I mean, I oh yeah, he a G for that. I thought he was. I thought he was with somebody at least, at least one person. But no, he by himself. Oh yeah, he 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 for real a G. I can show you guys now, right? This is basically where I was standing. This this is where I was, the camera was literally so there. This is what you saw, basically that. Now, I heard something, I cracked myself, I ran back here and as I picked it up, I went like that and then I saw something just behind that blue chair. Now, bearing in mind I saw it with my own eyes, I didn't realise I had it on camera, but a lot of you guys were saying it's shadows, it's this, it's that, but you know, I just cannot stressed you enough that this wasn't a shadow. I actually saw something move with my own eyes and I cannot reenact that, you know, that there is no shadow. And no lie, when he had the camera on the ground like that, like, and everything was out, like, dude, it looked like it was something dark with like yellow eyes or like gold eyes or whatever at the bottom like, or like in front of the chair. I'm not talking about the kid that I'm not talking about what he's seen. I'm talking about like that was in front of the chair, not behind the chair. Because what I seen was like some dark with gold eyes or yellow eyes right on the side of this little dresser thing, whatever that is, that's in front of the blue chair. What the hell was that? Oh, I think it's just water dripping. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm probably putting off going up there. But, oh, Jesus Christ. I could just hear noises all around me. Right, let's do this. What the hell was that? What was that? I'm sure I heard something. I don't know. It's probably just the wind. I felt that I had to come back here and just, just come here again and just see, you know, try and find a reason, you know, some like an explanation, if you like, to. But I never put. This is weird. I think it is just walk. Whoa. Okay. Okay, that's scary. I'm pretty sure it is just water dripping, but. Oh. God, this is absolutely. What the f? No, I'm, I'm hearing noises all around me. I don't know what it is. There is. Oh, I, 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 I am just so terrified right now. Much like his last visit, Colin again hears odd unexplained noises coming from all around him. He heads up to the hospital's second floor, takes a look around, and then heads back down to the first floor hallway. And that's when things take a terrifying turn. Hello, you that boy again. What is it about this place? Oh, I hate this place, I really do. Just listen. Yep. I would have been left. I wouldn't even came back. A small red ball comes rolling out of one of the hospital rooms and Colin makes a run for it. After all that he's seen and heard at the old abandoned hospital, 
Colin says he'll never go back alone. You can watch both explorations at the abandoned hospital and many more great urbex videos over on the YouTube channel, The Bearded Explorer. Mother. Canadian paranormal investigator Jordan from the popular YouTube channel Paranormies sets out on a solo investigation to a small two bedroom home in Winnipeg, Canada that is believed to be haunted by a troubled spirit. The house belongs to a man named Anesh who grew up in the home with his mother Manisha. But one day Anesh's beloved mother Manisha fell extremely ill. Refusing to go to the hospital, Manisha passed away on her own bed in the home that she and Anesh shared. Anesh was absolutely devastated when he found her. Struck with intense debilitating grief, he was unable to call the authorities for two days as he mourned. Today, Anesh believes that he made a terrible mistake by waiting so long, as his culture believes that a body must receive a proper burial ritual soon after death or the spirit could become trapped and unable to move on. Anesh claims that his mother has appeared to him as a white cat greeting him every day on his way to work. He has also seen his mother standing in his bedroom doorway after waking up in the middle of the night. Anesh says that the home has been so paranormally active that he truly believes the spirit of his mother is trapped inside. Paranormal investigator Jordan spends the night at the house in the hopes of helping Manisha's ghost pass on from its earthly bonds. Jordan decides to try a supernatural test. He leaves a motion activated ball at the top of the stairs in the loft before continuing his investigations downstairs. Later, when he finds himself back at the staircase to the loft, he's in for a chilling surprise. Okay, I think, well, oh, the ball's going off right now. Okay, I think, whoa, the ball's going off right now. Can you touch it again? Thank you for being active and using the equipment. Manisha, one more time, please. Can you touch the motion ball? Spirit's gonna do what they wanna do on their own time, bro. You can't tell them nothing. Whoa. Oh. Okay. Whoa. Oh. Light not working. What? Damn. Now this thing can't doesn't light up at all. He checks the upstairs loft but doesn't find any explanation as to how the little ball could have suddenly launched itself down the stairs. When Jordan heads back down, this happens. Oh. I hate these stairs. Whoa, okay. The door to the attic loft mysteriously closes on its own. Jordan decides to sit down on the bed where Mother Manisha tragically passed away in hopes of communicating with her spirit. What happens next is downright chilling. Manisha, are you, are you still here or are you, are you done for the night? Hold on, I know they're gonna replay it, y'all, but hold up, hold up, hold up.
Not even just that, but it was actually something standing up in there. That's a nice tub too. Denisha. Please, if I follow these footsteps, am I gonna find you? Okay. Okay, Manisha. I think it's time that we met face to face, right? Manisha? Do you know, if you want me to leave, I'll leave. I thought we were friends. The bathtub faucet suddenly turns on and when Jordan checks it out, he finds someone or something standing in the bathtub. Whoever or whatever it is appears to be dressed in red. The figure then disappears from the bathroom, leaving behind only watery footprints that lead down to the basement. When Jordan follows the footprints down, the lid of the washing machine lifts and drops on its own. Whatever it is, that thing got claws, like the toes of a goat. Man, bro, what? Oh my god, man. Oh! Then a light bulb next to the washer spontaneously bursts. Oh yeah, there it is. A static camera pointing towards the door to the basement and the door to the attic records as Jordan heads back upstairs. Without the investigator knowing, the camera catches something truly bizarre. Oh, there's a rough hot. Anisha? Anisha? What? A shadow figure quickly darts into the living room as Jordan comes around the corner of the basement. So could this be the spirit of Manisha still trapped inside the home she shared with her son? Let me know what you think down in the comments. You can watch this entire two-part investigation with even more terrifying activity and a possible conversation with Manisha's ghost over on the YouTube channel, Paranormies. Hide and seek. Jordanian ghost hunter Ahmad Sali sets out to investigate a home that's been terrorized by extreme paranormal activity. The father of the family who lives in the house reached out to Ahmad claiming to have seen the apparition of a little boy. He says the child spirit plays with his daughter's toys often screaming and throwing fits of rage. The family believes the boy to be a dangerous shape-shifting djinn, and they feel that it is no longer safe to live in their home. Ahmad stays overnight as he tries to get answers for the terrified family. He streams his investigation live on Snapchat. As the investigator walks around the house, mm, nothing much seems to happen. So he puts down his phone and decides to walk away from it hoping something might appear while he's not observing. His live audience is shocked by what the phone captures. Ahmad is looking away and has no idea that the little boy has made a chilling appearance. 
Unaware of the lurking Jin, Ahmad records himself as he steps inside the same room, right next to the figure. Surprisingly, the explorer still doesn't see anything, but his live audience does. <laughs> Ahmad is shocked when he finally sees the boy. He quickly grabs his phone and hurries inside the room, but there's no one there. And from here, the paranormal activity only intensifies. A few moments later, and this happens. Hey, you. Uh, eh? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم طب الولد هون والله غير أشوف الولد أو كل شيء أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم Something makes another quick appearance and Ahmad suddenly hears a loud slamming sound in the other room when he goes to check it out Again, there's nothing there. Ahmad is baffled and continues to search throughout the house. Again, the boy shows himself. Ahmad runs to find the child, but he has disappeared yet again. Bro, you gonna be playing hide and seek with this kid all night long, bro. It, you're not catching him, bro. It's, it's... So did the investigator capture the djinn that is said to haunt the family? Or is it all just an elaborate hoax? You decide. Thanks for watching. Check out my Instagram here, my Twitter here, and TikTok. If you're not subscribed, please do and turn on notifications. So hopefully I'll see you back. That's the end of that video, man. If you guys like this video, man, give it a fat thumbs up, like, comment, share, my Cavelli game. We up out of here. You guys have a blessed one and a safe one. I'm going to catch you guys on the next one, man. Peace.